my dad, my dad only had me. And one of my, I love my father. He, one thing I could say about him, he was there every time in terms of the special moments, you know, the graduations, um, the, the milestones, whatever it is, he was there. But in the other moments, um, talking to a girl for the first time moment, um, having particular dreams moment, he was not there. My father came from an era that believed in as long as you are now able to fend for yourself, then Ishmael, or you're on your own. My father was a disciplinarian, and so it was all about discipline for him. I had to be on the street and narrow all the time, but he was very loving at the same time. The fondest memory of my father growing up is him putting me to lay on his lap every now and then and removing lint in my hair. And so today, anybody who touches my eye falls asleep. I had a great father. I think my father was one of the very smart um, and one of the hardest working men I've grown to know. And um, I think it influenced a lot of things in my life, not just my relationship with my children, but also my working life. I have very fond memories of my father who passed in the year 2009. And he was actually my role model. I was one of the lucky persons to have grown up with my two parents. And my father, in particular, was my role model and um, he continues to impact my life to this day. My father, who is now 70, 72 years, um, would admit that he was not the father who was at home or who was the one that his kids would jump on or he would take to different places. But he always reminded us about a couple of things like education, make sure we take our education seriously. Even if he may not have attended the meetings, but we'd ensure that we get our books. Growing up with a father, it was just a father being um, very stern, do this or you, you cannot do that. It was the one way or you, you cannot have any disagreements and so on, um, whether the thing that you are asked to do is, well, they usually teach you to do the right thing, but it, it's like there's no other way. That is what I say, you have to do it. Um, you are going, yes, I'm permitting you to go out to play with the guys on the field, but you have to be in by 6 o'clock, and 6.01 is not 6 o'clock, it is 6 o'clock, and you will not hear why you came in at 6.01. When I first had my daughter, I felt my, my heart drop. Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to turn left or right um, because just having a feeling of seeing someone in your arm that you, you help bring life to, you know, you play the role in that person being on the earth today, you know, it's a special feeling that words cannot even describe. It was one of the greatest joys I've had in my lifetime. Um, actually, um, I was turning 26 at the time and I had always you know, as God for the gift of a child by that age. Okay, it was um, an exciting moment. Um, I mean, that is a moment that everybody, um, every father, responsible father would have loved to be in. And um, it's like, how would that baby look? That was a very surreal moment because um, normally you would, your partner would give birth, you would come and hold your child. But his, I had to, go to the, visit him at the, while he was in an incubator. Um, I guess he wanted to stick to his mother a little bit more, so he struggled a little bit to come out. And as a result, he was not 100% healthy when he came out, so he had to spend some time at the, under treatment. And um, I actually was the only one who was allowed to go into that area to meet and to hold him. Before I was a dad, um, I believe I knew it all. I believe I, I had direction. I believe there was purpose. But nothing in this world gives you purpose than being a father. Knowing that you are responsible um, for the upbringing, um, security, and nurturing of another life, man, being a father is one of the greatest things in the world. My favorite part about being a father is knowing that there is uh, another human being that will love me unconditionally. That will love me no matter what. 
okay that when i know when that individual tells me they love me they mean it and when they tell me they're not happy with me they mean it there's no hypocrisy sometimes you know being a police officer hectic schedule work and everything else that comes with it when i call my daughter and i hear a voice man what better therapy do i need it was a great experience the changes from being born and seeing them as a baby and the stages of development. It, the experience, most some of it unbelievable, um, but it was great. Just experiencing a child growing in your presence and with you and trying to nurture that child. So yeah, I would say it was great. I had to find the easiest way to comb. So I found the easiest thing to do, just with my daughter, just um, a puff with a band and that ready to go. So, um, it, it, it made me understand a lot about how what women go through. Improving a relationship with your child, um, first start by having a good relationship with the mother. All right. um, as I said before, it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a good relationship between a mother and a father to help raise a, a disciplined child. Having to take stock of every detail of your children's lives and to worry about the things that would happen. Um, to always, it always, it's almost um, you become paranoid. You see a lot of accidents before it happened. So you be, that protective parenting is a lot greater than just being a father. The greatest fear of being a father is being a police officer for so many years. And I've responded to so many um, scenes where I've seen mothers crying over there over their daughters, fathers crying over their sons. You know, my greatest fear is to see my daughter uh, being slain and I have to respond to, to that scene. That's one of my greatest fears of being a father. My biggest fear about being a father is, um, number one, losing my only child. Um, we've had situations where um, parents had to bury their, their child, their loved one. And when you look at the natural order of things, what is expected as the natural order of things, it should be kids bearing their parents. So that's one of my greatest fears. I am the proud father of four children. And I say four, but I, I've lost my first actually in a vehicular accident. And that was just about four months ago. I, I suppose I've, I've gone through both extremes, you know, holding him for the first time and then putting him to rest. And, and this feeling is, uh, uh, there's, there's no explanation for how you feel. I, I guess um, those who have gone through it, you know, would have a fair idea as to what it's like. If I were to say a lesser fear is um, my daughter um, growing up to be someone that probably I didn't envision that she would be, knowing um, the type of discipline and morals that I instilled in her. So that's my greatest fear, but at the end of the day, I will still love her no matter what. My greatest fear is that I fail. My greatest fear is that my kids grow up and I would have done something during their upbringing to affect them negatively. And you know, that would reflect later on in their life. One of the greatest fears would be failure, as a, first off as a father, not living up to expectations of your children, your family. Secondly, as a law enforcement person, I've always feared one of my children going in the wrong direction. Um, that would not be um, the ideal thing for me or for the family. One of the fears that you may have is that your, your kids may be trapped into doing something that is against the law and so on, but um, with constant communication, constant dialogue with them. You let them know what is right from what is wrong. Let them know the law. Um, um, right now, my children, you could say that they too are police officers because by constantly telling them of the law, what they need to do, what they, what they should not do, and that um, is being communicated to them anytime that I get the opportunity. It was worrisome. I wondered how, um, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? How are they going to react moving forward? What can I do to protect them from anything that they may feel which is negative? 
and so most of it I most of the time it was you know worrisome always worried always wondering trying to talk to them all the time to find out to try to get them to open up as much as possible and my daughter is very very quiet and so um, even today I sit and I look at her I monitor her every move every behavior everything she says just to see if there's something in there that would be a cause for concern so I could nip it in the bud and take care of it as soon as possible. I don't think corporal punishment is absolutely necessary. I think, you know, the environment that you raise your children in, the communication that you have between them, the type of communication and understanding that would erase the necessity for corporal punishment. So I raised my kids without corporal punishment. I grew up knowing that um, you don't spare the rod to spoil the child. But I believe that that concept has changed um, a bit in society today. I still don't spare the rod. Um, I have not had to, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I've not had to beat any of my children in a while. Because I think by the time they grew to be about 12, 13, when they started to push some, my boys, in fact, some level of resistance, um, I, I firmly established who was the father and what was my role in the family. Corporal punishment, um, well, it is not one um, component that I exercise um, frequently at all. As a matter of fact, my last um, child is, is 14 and um, he, I can't recall the last time I you know, used corporal punishment, that this, this form of punishment. Um, on him. I, I think there are always better ways to handle any situation. As a father, I think um, if I could recall, I did not, I didn't have the opportunity to say to impact this um, corporal punishment onto um, the children because I think it was um, through constant communication, checking with them and so on that they were able to grow up in the way that I feel was best for, for them. So even if um, you would be thinking of beating them and so on, um, they did not give me that opportunity to do it because they knew what was right, they knew what I, I stood for and then they, they did it. And up to now, even um, one, two being over 20, one is um, 18 to 19, they they still have that level of control and um, they are, they are, they're displaying probably the, um, the way in which they were brought up. Maybe in their lifetime, maybe once, if I can recall, I try to forget. Um, my son up to this day remembers one time which I did, which he always reminds me, which I will not even share right now. For him not, do, well, I can say, not for him not doing what I know he was capable of doing. And that he was just playing around until I had to send a lesson out to him, which to this day he remembers. I believe time spent. You know, the same way you would have time to spend with the ladies or with your favorite um, um, bunch of friends watching football, you need to equally or even more spend more time with your child because guess what guys you're gonna get old you're gonna get old and you're expecting the expectation is that this child will be the one to take care of you so time spend more time with your children see i think that's one of our challenges um, in a society especially single parent um, families where the role of the father is not as prevalent as it ought to be, and fathers being absent in the lives of the children. And I think that has impacted our society significantly in terms of what we see, um, especially when young men start to turn into um, ad adults. Um, at the age of 11, 12, 13, um, you see the challenges with a, a single mother trying to raise a child, and without the father there, it is a mountain. You need to let the kids know what you yourself what you are doing, what, um, what you expect them to or of them, correct them when they uh, have done something wrong, praise them when they have done something right, let them know the, 
reasons, especially for not allowing them to do certain, certain things. So you find that that relationship is there and they too would be able to, they would feel comfortable in communicating um, things to you. Fathers, you need to take responsibility for your kids. Um, especially with my job, um, we have too many um, mothers taking fathers in into um, family court for not um, providing and so on, and running away from their responsibilities. Um, you need to take responsibility. It affects the children. Most importantly, try to have fun with your children. Not just by the snacks, not just by the clothes, not just give the money for entertainment, but have fun with them also. Choose wisely. Uh, don't, if you're not ready for fatherhood, um, protect yourself. <laughs> yeah, I see Father's Day uh, as any other day. Um, I believe every day should be Father's Day uh, because I believe that fathers should at least spend a part of their day with their kids or kid. Um, so I see every day as Father's Day. But what would make it special on that day is when you as a father get the opportunity to spend the entire day with your your kid, especially if you have a daughter, because the bond between a daughter and a father is something that mothers cannot break. Father's Day means to me a shovel, a fork, dirt, plants, because every Father's Day I hear that. Um, what do you want for Father's Day? You don't want a shovel, a fork, <laughs> or this. <laughs> <laughs> These kinds of things. <laughs> On behalf of the Roddy Bay Police Station, Gross Bay Police Station, I would like to wish everyone at the Bodily Correctional Facility. The Port Police Department. The management and staff of the Fire Department. I would like to wish all police officers and um, law enforcement officers on the whole, from um, being the traffic unit, marine unit, the SSU, um, all units um, that patrol patrol unit, the stations, persons who probably have to leave their homes and um, be at work, you have to sleep at a station, would wish to be home to enjoy Father's Day, but they would be on duty. Um, these are, that's a special greetings to them. I was there too, I know how it, how it feels when you wish to be a place that you cannot be, but because of the dedicate, dedication to work that you are coming to. Happy Father's Day and happy Father's Day to all the, the nation, all fathers out there, um, I would like to wish you a very happy Father's Day.